Laverne Graham reporting live from the red carpet at LA Live's Microsoft Theater here in Los Angeles, California for the 71st annual Creative Arts Emmy Awards, the Creative Arts Emmys. Some of you guys have probably never heard of the Creative Arts Emmys. Well, the Creative Arts Emmys honors outstanding technical and artistic achievement in various genres of television programming like animation, documentary, and reality. So stay tuned because I'm going to get to talk to those nominees in those various categories. Tanisha Laverne Grant, BlackInAmerica.com. Talk to me, you're presenting tonight. I am, yes, and I'm also nominated. <laughs> Not, you're always nominated for something. Not always. So it, it feels like, it feels yeah. really special to be nominated for a third time for an acting Emmy. Amazing. You're awesome. You're Thank awesome. you. Talk to me a little bit about what tonight means for you, though. Like what being I nominated just, for an Emmy means for you. Can I tell you, my my dear friend of 11 years, Deja Smith, who is also my makeup artist, she did my makeup tonight. She does makeup on Pose, and the makeup team from Pose is nominated tonight. And so Deja is here as a nominee. She's nominated for an Emmy for the very first time. She's a black transgender woman, and oh, I could just, it that. just makes look me, I'm that. just, there oh, aren't even words. Laverne. There aren't even words. My I'm middle name so is Laverne, so I gotta happy. love you up. Your middle name is Laverne? Yes, it oh is. My I God. use my okay. full name, so Nisha Laverne. Literally, at the tears, I will not let you come down. Back it up. Oh, back it up. do not come, back do not come. Back it up. Back but it up. that's what it means. That's what it, oh my goodness gracious, don't cry. <clears throat> I will not cry, Lord. So that, I mean, I just, I love her so much. She's an amazing human being. She's an amazing makeup artist. And she has worked so hard and she deserves this. And sometimes all you need is a shot. And if you get a shot, you will turn it out. And and she's, she got her shot and she's now an Emmy nominated makeup artist. So I am thank you, Ginger Cohen, for giving me my shot. Thank you so much thank for giving you. me this opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. You come on in here. All right, What's 25 up? years, your family hit their airways with one of the most iconic shows 25 years in ago. Living in, living in, living in, living in Living Color. In Living Color. In Living Color, yes, yes. I got the banana nails. Proud, proud Yeah, colors. black and I'm proud. Stylist, All black and I'm proud. It. Yes. Listen, how did that show, like, color you as an actor? I mean, your family is like a dynasty, man. Um, that show taught me everything I know today. It taught me how to act. It taught me how to um, be funny, it taught me how to write. That whole, sh that show was my comedy college. So, you know, it, it was a great, uh, great, great experience for me. Yeah, and what do you want to say to the next generation of Wayans that are coming up behind you guys, like your children and their, your nieces and nephews, do they have that same, ugh, like that grit that you guys had? Or did you guys spoil them? Well, no, I didn't spoil them. Um, and um, they do have their own little set of talent and skills that you guys will see when they are ready to bring that to the world um, all I can say to them is keep working hard kids keep working hard. do your thing well thank you so much for your time thank you thank so you, much. Thank you thank so you. much Tommy 25 years of in living color how did it change your life look at me You're when amazing. I first started I had a big old mustache are we gonna see you at Sammy Davis jr. yeah when you know you are when um, I'm gonna say 2022 2022 yeah. all right I'm looking forward to it right, you thank you so much for your time thank you Thank you, thank you so much for all that you've done for us. You are a trailblazer. Talk to me a little bit about that honorary Oscar that you received and what that was like for you. I kept watching your speech over and over and over again. I don't know which part, I mean, you talk about your friend and then you talk about your mom and you're like, mama, I did it. I, th I mean, that resonated with me in such a big way because we're never too old or too young to want to please our mommies. Talk a little bit about that. Well, first of all, I tell you, uh, I was somewhat stunned. And I say that because I had been out here um, to attend an Emmy Awards because I had been nominated for murder that year. I didn't win, so I went back home. I, get, I walk in the door, and I, I hear there's a telephone call from the coast. I said, don't tell me they're gonna make me fly all the way back out there to give me this Emmy Award, oh okay? My God. When I'm on pins and needles, I'm like, what is this thing? So, um, my manager said to me, I have a very important phone call for you. And I said, who? He, he didn't tell me. 
He just put the phone in my hand. And this gentleman on the other side said, Miss Tyson, it gives me great joy to tell you that yesterday, 54 members of the, that's right, that's right, opted to give you an honorary Oscar. And now I have never burst into tears oh my God, by Tyson. anything. I was like Niagara Falls. I was oh. shocked. And I tell you the reason why, because I've been trying to decide why did I break down and cry? Because I never expected an Oscar. But anybody who knows my work and have watched my work over the years know that my body of work was done that was impressive was done on television. So I gave up giving an Oscar, getting an Oscar. I really did. I never thought about it. Television, so when he told film, me commercial, that, it doesn't matter. You're a cinematic queen. It doesn't matter the medium. Yes. And it was well deserved. Thank well you. deserved. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Right. I'm a huge fan of your work as well. I mentioned to Mira Rice in a graduation speech I gave a few years ago. Yeah, because senseless, senseless. So talk to me a little bit about this amazing project that yeah. you've had that has just caught on. Yeah, um, it's called Traveling While Black, and it's a virtual reality project. And really what we wanted to do was tell the story of the Green Book, um, a forgotten, the real story of the Green Book by African-American director, me. Um, but really um, connected also to the present and how much hasn't changed. And the film features Samaria Rice and this, her story, her very powerful and personal story of the murder of her son, Tamir. I mean, how do you, how do you even get up every day? I mean, not that you have to stay in a place of, 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 of grief, but to lose your baby, your son, to senseless act of violence. Through the grace of God and um, working with great people like Traveling Wild Black um, gave me a platform to share my story and I'm just honored to be a part of, you know, history under the circumstances. But, you know, um, the story needs to be told and we definitely need to keep the awareness alive and seeing it through the virtual reality um, the VR, it was amazing. It just it gave me a whole different outlook on life itself and television itself. So I recommend everybody go see it. I mean, you really won't be the same once you see it. I can imagine. Yes. What do you want to say to other grieving mothers out there who have lost their sons, daughters to this kind of violence? Um, murder. It's murder. Well, you must get up and say your child's name and continue to... Um, you know, fight for your child and, and build a legacy for your child because it's too many of us just sitting down and not able to get up and do anything, but you can. It took a lot for me to do it once I seen how the world was behind me, but I eventually got up and I started fighting back and I started um, sharing my platform and I started, you know, being with other mothers to give me strength and stuff like that. So. You know, I just know we all need to be on one accord to fight this injustice in America. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Yeah. Thank you. It was nice talking yeah. to both of you. So, you guys, twice in two weeks. Can you believe it? I'm with, like, my queen mother right here. Uh -huh. The beautiful Felicia Rashad. You're nominated tonight yes. for that wonderful guest appearance on, I mean, first of all, that scene in that movie. I mean, in the, in the show. You guys are at the dinner table and your daughter is hurting and that you give such amazing you you act without even saying anything what was that like preparing for that scene this is us I know what you're talking about um, this is the work that we do as actors no, that's the work that you do <laughs> that's the work that we do this is the work that we do as actors it's what we do you know it's what just what we do. You nailed it. Thank you. When you saw it on the paper, what resonated with you first, though? 
Well, I thought that the writer uh, was very good. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it starts with your script, right? Yeah. yeah. And so Ebony Freeman wrote a beautiful script. Uh, she's and an amazing writer. She's an amazing writer, and she really was looking at the intricacies of that relationship, that mother-daughter relationship. Uh, how a parent works hard to give what they think is best and what is needed most. How a young person accepts or doesn't accept what a parent gives and feels sometimes, well, this is what I'm supposed to do because this is what I'm being told to do. And this question is often answered, asked, how do you come to know yourself if you're always doing what someone else has told you to do? That scene resonated with so many people. People were on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, yes. because we've all had those moments. I know I've had those moments with my parents when they were like, you want to do what? <laughs> and it's because parents want the best, but with always, always not understanding what's inside the child. I think what resonated with audience the most is that your character actually apologized. That doesn't happen, Mrs. Rashad. No. Very rarely does really? that happen. Very rarely. Yeah. Hmm. You know, so hmm. I just I'm so grateful for your work. I'm so grateful for all that you do. And I'm hoping and praying that you get the Emmy tonight because it's so well deserved not just for the work that you've done recently, but just throughout your career. We are all rooting for you, madam. That is very kind. Thank you so Thank very you. much. Thank you. Can I give you a hug? I promise I won't give me. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about you being here tonight, presenting yes. Crazy Rich Asians, where we are in the culture. I am. I'm presenting tonight. Uh, that's why I'm here tonight. Uh, I've never presented at the Emmys before. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Hopefully I don't pass out. So. You will not pass out. <laughs> well, I'm passing out right now on this carpet. No, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. So you're <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your journey in the industry. You know what you yeah. wanted to be. I mean, you just don't wake up and say, you know, I want to work in this Hollywood thing. No, you know, I did a lot of theater. Uh, I grew up in the Philippines, watching American television and American films. I never thought I would be a part of it at all. Uh, and I, you know, I moved to Oregon as a teen, and, and I did Oregon. Oregon. Wow, who moves to Oregon? Why your mom and daddy go to Oregon? You ask them. <laughs> yes, I moved to Oregon. I wanted to know what regret felt like. Oh, and, gotcha. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, I, I did theater in, in, in high school, and um, it wasn't until I was 25 where I discovered I did my background in stand-up comedy. So when I was 25, I started going to open mics, and really it was then that I was like, oh, I want to work in comedy in any regard, stand-up, TV, film, I just want to be in that world. So, you know, I really haven't stopped working uh, since I was 25. I mean, I, I haven't been able to do it full-time. I, I mean, being a full-time working actor has only been happening in the, for the past six years, but I've been hustling for the past 15, 16 years. It's been That's a long journey. Is. Yeah, you gotta hustle. That's yeah. Give some advice to aspiring comedians out there. Talk to them about that writing process and how critical that is to their career. Um, I just have to say is keep at it. It's, it's really like you can't let a bad day get you down because you're going to have a lot of bad days. You're going to have a lot of bad sets. Uh, and it really, yeah, a lot of bad sets, a lot of bad days. And you really just have to keep going because I, I find that in this town, uh, hustle beats talent every time. Every time, you just gotta keep go keep at it. Yeah. Listen, I tell my friends all the time, it's like, it's one thing to have all these amazing fancy degrees, but those fancy degrees won't work. Yeah. I have a college degree. It won't work by itself. You have to have drive and ambition and Absolutely. execution. Absolutely. I I am a college dropout. You know. I. And look at you now. Yes. You get so. to stand on the red carpet. Yes. At the Creative Arts Emmys yes. next to me. Absolutely. Looking yeah. fabulous, by the way. Thank you. Thank I you. I want those earrings. Thank you. Yeah. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank <laughs> oh my gosh. So what's going to be your opening bit for today when you go up there to present? Listen, I mean, they wrote something funny for us. So. Uh, oh, they wrote it for you. Yeah, they wrote it for yeah. Aww. You know what? I mean, it's the, it's the Emmys, so there's a whole machine. Gotcha. That no, I you know what it. I mean? I it's a whole machine. It. I can't just say what I want here. You know, that's uh, you know. I mean, I could. They'd probably yank me off the stage. Well, you know what? So. I can't wait to get inside and hear what you have to say. Right. Thank you so, so much nice for your time. You. Thank you. How are you? How are you? It is a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. 
We're all in there, oh yes. God. And we, I think we've already exchanged know, pleasantries. Know, yeah. You look absolutely amazing, Thank madam. You. I'm so honored to have the opportunity to have you on my mic today. Oh, You're an icon and a legend. Which means I'm old. No. <laughs> no, it means you have set the tone. Oh, okay. Yes, it means you are a trailblazer. You have showed us the way, sir. I mean, from Cooley High, yeah. a different world. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And you're Emmy nominated for your guest role on How to Get Away with Murder. Murder, yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. How did, like, where were you when you got the news that you were nominated for this role? I was filming in Pittsburgh in a um, uh, production of Ma Rainey's Black oh, Bottom. Wow, Ma Rainey. Starring Viola Davis. Uh -huh. Are you serious? Right, so we both got the news and we both came to work that morning and was like, did you hear, did you hear, yeah! It was like that. Wow. You know what I, I love? I mean, just the, the pacing of how to get away with murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, your character had just, unfortunately, that story is too common. Yeah, yeah. That you was know. one of the draws to me uh, for d doing the role, aside from working with the, the, the wonderful people it's, uh, associated, was that it was a... Uh, a common thread, you know. Black uh, men in the prison black system. Black men in the prison system I can relate to more than I wish I could. Yeah. Uh, and so it was very personal for me. But what was wonderful was the time that Peter Norwick and his writers and directors took to hear some of the uh, input that I had on that subject, being so closely related to it. So that made it a very special uh, a project for me, and um, I'm more than honored to be a part of it. I nominated. I mean, it's so That's it's a well-deserved nomination. That's just icing on the cake, absolutely. You know what I love? Cooley High is just a cult classic. Yeah. The Academy just did a program when it had yeah. all you guys back. I know, I know. What was that like? Reuniting like oh, with the cast and talking know. about? Oh, you were still. I was in Pittsburgh. I was filming. Yes. Oh, so I missed it. But we were just with my good friend still, Larry His Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, last That's night, Coach right, Eats. Yeah. And uh, so he held the fort down and told me all about it. That's amazing. Yeah. What do you want to say? Like, what would you say to young people who are coming into acting and wanting to do this as a career? I mean, so many people are like, oh, I could do that. Yeah. And they don't really understand that you have to be a true artisan of this thing. Yeah. The first thing I say is don't do it for the money or the fame. Do it because you can't help but do it. You know, there's something in your soul that says, I got to do this hell or high water. If you don't hear that, don't do it. It's too tough. That's how I feel about journalism. There you go. There you <laughs> go. But I love it, and I get to meet people like you and your lovely wife. I mean, you have challenged the culture, pushed the culture. I mean, a different world sent my generation to college. Right. That's what the art is for. That's exactly what it's for. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My main man. Marcus, did you realize we met when Blackish first started, right? Yeah, the beginning, the tip top. Wow. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah, like, what's wild. it been like? Um, it's been amazing. I mean, it's 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 definitely been a whirlwind. It's been six years since the show started. It feel, feels like it's lasted my entire life. It's been a lot of work, but um, I'm happy to uh, finally just being able to be places like this are all contributed to being on the show, and it's just been a it's been a blessing. It's been it's it's everything I've ever wanted. So, you guys have touched on a lot of like deep and heavy topics on yeah. that show. What's one of the topics that you guys touched on that really resonated with you in a big way? I think one of our early episodes that, that really had a huge impact was our police brutality episode. Um, I felt like a lot of people, um, it gave them an opportunity to sit down and talk to their kids about it, um, especially people of color, just um, understanding those dynamics and, uh, and just really pulling from the headlines and telling stories that are authentic and real that people can connect to and relate to. Um, and then we also gave all perspectives of the story. We had people like Ruby with a different perspective and I feel like a lot of people identify with that because um, it's not just one sided. We give you all the information, let you come to your own conclusion. We're definitely going to have a say on what, you, uh, on what we, we, uh, we believe is right. But um, we definitely just we, we provide a full, um, a full analysis of every single uh, situation that goes down in the public eye. The show 
It's it's a classic. I just watched an episode the other day where your character was not going to Howard, yeah. but was going to work at your dad's yeah. advertising firm. And then he was kind of in his feelings yeah. because it looked like, you know, your character's dream was about to pop off. Yeah. And talk to me a little bit about that because I think as, as you know, we've all had those moments where we're like, mm, is yeah. college the right direction for us? Yeah, um, it was a pretty interesting episode of film. Um, the gap year, the gap year episode, and finding out that Junior wasn't doing that. I definitely believe in uh, higher education. I feel like everybody should um, pursue the path that is right for them. Um, and Junior felt like this was the right path for him. Um, so we're seeing how it's going, and it's unraveling this season, which I'm excited for people to see. Um, he definitely had a big start with the Migos, so it's yeah, that was pretty tight. So. Um, so it, it just, it's just kind of following along that character's journey, and it's really cool how each and every character on Blackish has evolved in different ways. Like, it's not, we're not remaining stagnant. We don't have the same jokes, the same comedic style. We're all growing. So um, it's nice to see that the writing's reflecting that um, and interesting to see where this year is going to take Junior. So. Back to this whole gap year thing. Back yeah. to this whole gap year thing. What I loved best about that episode is it showed the importance of having to have these really healthy intergenerational relationships. Yeah. I mean, here your character was all about, you know, the social media forward thinking, yeah. and the old guard was like, mm. yeah. you know what I mean? So talk a little about, talk a little bit about the importance of having those intergenerational relationships. Um, I think it's definitely the uh, the older generations inform the younger ones, but then we also bring some new topics, whether it's uh, climate change, telling them like maybe it's not okay to throw away those plastic straws because all the turtles are dying and we're killing our planet. So it's important to have those uh, in, uh, intergenerational relationships because everybody has something to learn from somebody, um, and I feel like we can teach each other and we all have something to give to to one another. So, You're amazing. Thank all the you. best to you, man. Thank you. Uh, Good thank to see you. you. So you guys are nominated for like stunt coordination. Yes. How does one become a stunt coordinator? Ladies first. Well, first you have to be a stunt performer. So you can learn the ins and outs of what your people are going to be doing on the job. And breaking into the business, it's different for everybody. It kind of, I don't wanna say it fell into my lap because I worked really hard for it, but I didn't even know it was an option until I worked on the movie Avatar and worked closely with the stunt team that that became the next step for me. Wow, I have a friend who is um, a stunt woman. Her name is Joan Dees Candice. Oh, yeah. lo lovely lady. She works for us all the time. She's been on our show. She's wonderful. Oh my God. Yes. Joan Dees. She's yes. <laughs> stunt coordinator. So this interview was dedicated to Joan Dees Candice. Yes. We moved to LA together. I don't want to say when. But it's just so great that both of us have evolved in their career. So what's a day in a life like for you? How do you prepare for like a big action scene? Like that's got to be like when I think of like stunts, I think of Mission Impossible and Tom Cruise and all that like crazy stuff. Like how do you prepare for that? It's, um, you know, I mean, the writers bring us such great material to work with and to try uh, the two of us get into a room and we brainstorm first and then we bring our, our stunt team in to start choreographing and putting our skeleton of what this is together. But I mean, we have. We have an incredible cast that they work so hard to, and, and they, they perform their own stuff, a lot of it. They can they can do all the choreography themselves. They do, they, it, it's an incredible show to be a part of. It's difficult, it's so fast paced. There's so much for us to do, but it's it's a lot of fun, for sure. What makes it a hit? I'm sorry, what was that? What makes it a hit? Honestly, what makes everything a hit is the writing. You have to have a good story. If you have a good story, you, you can fall short in other areas, but if you can keep people engaged, and then you layer that on top of the great performances. We have an amazing cast, they're incredible actors. I mean, this is a story that we're still telling 30 years later. So it, it it's it's the layers, but bottom line, it starts with the writing. John Herowitz and Josh Hild and Hayden Schlossberg, our writers and creators are just, they, they've taken it to the next level one become a stunt coordinator I mean I know it's it's a difficult path it's not like the, the beaten path either most people don't wake up and say oh when I grow up I want to be a stunt coordinator it's, it's a process I mean you like she said earlier you got to be a stunt performer first so you learn the ins and out of everything um, my progression as I went I was a stunt performer for many years then I became a fight well, how do you even get to do that uh, you know what I mean like how do you get to do that 
you, I, my background is martial arts and motocross, oh, and I have gymnastics. We're talking about so you something. have skills. When you have skills to get in there and start doing some things, and you don't have any fear of doing anything dangerous, then that's where you're going to go, I guess. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, guys, yeah, for your time. So it's a pleasure meeting you. She's a wonderful lady. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Game of Thrones, man. <laughs> Game of Thrones has become a, a cult classic. People could hardly contain themselves, you know, when those episodes would come on. Talk to me a little bit about sound design and what that entails. A lot of people focus on the actors and the wardrobe, but that sound, yeah, that, that sound is the pulse. Right, it's about putting you there in the middle of the action and making, yeah. letting you feel that so that you're part of it, you know? Um, and with a fantasy, it's really interesting because you've got to, I would say it's, you know, we talk a lot about the suspension of disbelief, but for sound design, for fantasy, it's almost like I need to take you to the threshold of believability where you can believe that dragons are real, you know? What is your day in a life when preparing, you know, for your scenes? Like you sit down, like what do you do? Like I'm, I'm so fascinated by this whole process. Well, it, you know, I, my job was to deal with all the fantastical elements, so dragons, white walkers, all that stuff. Um, so each one had kind of a different trajectory in terms right. of approach. But the dragons, I mean, it's been really interesting and what I would do, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a unique series in the sense that sound designers had to grow up with the dragons, which is something that, you know, we've not actually experienced that before because I got them when they were toddlers on season three, right up to the wow. end, dying, turning into ice, doing all that stuff. And so what I would do at the beginning of each season is look at the trajectory, for instance, of the dragons. What What is going to happen over the season? Because we, we were able to get the whole season together and how we would deal with it was like a, a, like a 10 hour feature or an eight hour feature, however long, right? So it's like rather than, than many episodes. And I love episode, I love serial TV that way because you get to unfold the sound design over an entire, entire season. So I would go and see what the arc of the dragons is, for instance, for a season and then start digging around for how to make that stuff work so you believe everything and want to feel like you can reach out and touch the dragons or feel their breath on your face, you know? Wow. I mean, you've done an outstanding job. Thank you. Game of Thrones, like I said, I mean, hands, hands, hands down, one of the greatest shows in television. When did you know it was a hit? I don't know. I mean, I came on in three and was thrilled to be on it just because hashtag dragons. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> But, um, you know, I don't know, you know, it, it was a slow boil, really. I mean, if you think about it, it started off as a show nobody knew, and it grew and grew. And I think as people embrace the story, the world, the actors, all that stuff. It, Have you, you know? followed any of, like, the Twitter feuds over oh, yes. again? <laughs> yes. Don't get me started. <laughs> oh, it's serious. It was, yeah, it was disappointing because I think in this world right now, we need escape, man. It's like... It, it, this world is rough, and I've always felt bad that in some ways I'm not making a bigger contribution to the greater good, but I felt in some ways with Thrones, it was like it gave a place for people to escape this world and dream. But you are. The world needs creatives. The world needs art. The, with the Twitter feud, I felt really sad because people seemed angered by it and not didn't feel it like a place where they could escape to. and. And, and not everybody, but you know, it was it was a little disappointing. But I, I I'm so proud of the show and the team, everybody, everybody who worked on the show. Um, it has been a magnificent experience. I feel so grateful and blessed. You know, wow. yeah. Thank you so much. Continue Thank blessings you. and success to you. It was and a pleasure to meet you. Your <laughs>